My name is Boyd Sharp. I'm 39 years old. I'm an IT guy. Working in an office all day, and uh, I am in the biggest rut. I need a reason to get out of bed in the morning, and uh, I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Boyd has no background in mixed martial arts, but somehow he came up with the idea of, hey, I want to try this. Here we go, here we go. Oh, here. Let's get hard here, let's go. Yeah. I've never been in a fight in my entire life, but in one year, I'm going to get in a mixed martial arts cage and fight a professional fight. You better get up and fight. When I told people that I was going to do this, they said, A, you're nuts, and B, can I come too? You better get up and fight. And I'm just trying to show that ordinary people, when they put their minds to it, can do extraordinary things. Two months ago, 250 ambitious people came to try out for the Cubicle to the Cage Mixed Martial Arts Training Program. Boyd Sharp came up with the idea after trying an MMA class with head trainer Peter Martel. The selected cubes will train with Peter for one year in the hopes of fighting a professional fight. Boyd knows it's his last chance to prove himself and is patiently waiting to see if his dream will come true. That's right, thank you. It remains now in the hands of Peter Martel, who is in charge of selecting the 60 cubes to return for a second round of workouts. It's hard enough to find 60 who are worthy, even harder when your gym may suddenly disappear. We're all set to move forward with round two. Hello. Whittle that number down from 60 to 30-ish or so. And uh, we were hit with the news that our gym, uh, Palookas, was closing in a week. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. It left us in a really bad spot, though. Uh, we kind of got hung up to dry with it. Uh, our members have nowhere to train, and now we've got we've to scramble to try to find some place. I'm Mickey McDonald, uh, chair of the Nova Scotia Boxing Authority. I seen, uh, had a vision to create an uh, environment where kids could come and have a positive experience. And it started to work. We were making some impact in there, but all of a sudden, uh, the kids were being pushed out because we had so many professional boxers and, and MMA people in here training. They were kind of overpowering and scaring the kids off, right? So I'm just going to uh, regroup and um, sell the building and uh, find another way to try to help the kids. Peter had no choice but to try to find a new place to train on a tight budget. They eventually found a place that, while not nearly as comfortable and aesthetically pleasing, would be more of a gritty fighter's gym. With the major headache of having to move shop behind them, they were now ready for the second round of tryouts and a chance to get to know a few of the potential cubes a bit better. I knew we were in trouble when a great many people couldn't get into the cage. They were struggling to get out over a three-foot <laughs> climb into the, into the MMA cage. Uh, and it was hilarious. When some of them got in, they were out of breath. The thing is, that some of these guys have no idea what's in store for them. This is actually the condition they're in, and somehow they're sitting on their coach saying, I could do better than that. I could be an MMA fighter. The second round interviews were a little more intimidating for some of this rather eclectic group. I write software in a cubicle. I blow glass for a living. Wedding photographer. I teach English as a second language. Computer network technician. I'm a mom to my beautiful 14-month-old daughter, Riley. Uh, I'm a painter. I'm a radio producer. I'm a grave digger. Uh, I really don't have a goddamn clue why I'm here today. I do anti-submarine warfare for the military. Correctional officer. I'm a cashier at Walmart. And at one time lived on a mountain with Benedictine monks. Basically, my job every day is to sell flowers to hot chicks, which is amazing. I love it. but. What I'm thinking is, I would also love it if I was able to like, just punch people in the face every day for, for fun. Some people who were invited back didn't even show up. 
Others, like Boyd and former professional wrestler Rick Doyle, are back and a bit anxious of what lies ahead. What you've got to do is you've got to show us something here. You've got to show us that you deserve to be here. You've got drive, determination, and heart. Uh, I know you don't have skill, and we're going we're to give you that. But I need to see that you can push yourself. And I don't care if you die before the third round, but I want to see that you've left everything you have on the map. You push yourself as hard as you possibly can. Okay, guys, let's see what you got. Let's go. This is the last chance for any potential cube to impress Peter. Come on. This round of training was much more intense than the first, and people were giving it everything they had to try to get noticed. Come on! Hey, come on! Come on! That's it! That's the way! That's the way! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on. Come on. Let's go! Come on! Come on! There's three or four good guys. Some of these guys. This guy's solid. That guy's solid. A couple of good guys. Lots of hurt. A lot of guys are really suck too. A lot of guys are really suck. I think the level of athletes here are a little bit higher than the first time, though. Look at me. Get up. Do it. Come on. I don't think it's a matter of what kind of condition you're into right now. I think they're looking for hurt. I think it's a matter of, uh, you know, everybody's going to be at a different level at this point. It's a matter of what you can turn yourself into. I think that's what this is all about. disgusting thing that you can ever do when you're tired to have to fall on the floor and then jump your entire body weight it looks like nothing i guarantee you these guys would rather die now to be doing that get up there it is get up go come on show me something here boyd opted out of the workout without consulting peter deciding to focus on the logistical side of trying to organize the most important round of tryouts and with the stakes raised some of the onlookers like byron were feeling a little nervous and unsure of how they were going to make out. I'm going to get my ass handed to me. For sure. <laughs> my name is Byron Fillmore. Three years ago, I, I sold my uh, software development company and basically set me up for life. I've never fought. Uh, I've actually, I've never thrown a punch. I'm looking into buying fake cauliflower ears to put on so it looks like I've had some fighting experience and, and just kind of walk around the gym talking about all the fights I've been in and stuff just to kind of give people some idea that I'm a tough guy, but I'm, I'm the biggest pussy ever. So I, I bought all of this equipment and it's never been touched. So there's literally dust from the packaging it was delivered in. Over the next year, I'm going to live in this room. So, uh, plus I joined three other gyms. So, at any moment, if I get the feeling I, I need to work out, there's there's no place that I can't go. Go! Put your hands up. When I went to tryout, I weighed in at 320. I think it lasted about a minute. And then at that point, I was there was nothing left. Like I was completely gassed. 60 seconds, right? So I I can't imagine how people go full 15 straight minutes fighting, like full fighting, getting punched in the face. I I I, I can't imagine how I'm gonna be doing that. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm setting a good example for my kids. One thing I'm not as a queer, so I don't care if they have to pull me out of there with two broken legs. I'm not going to quit. I actually made a diet called Bacon Diet that uh, I'm actually publishing it, and uh, it's a really bizarre diet that I invented, but it, it works. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on, oh, bacon. Come on, Stop. Stop. get up. There you go. Good job. It would have been easy for Byron to quit right on the spot, but he didn't give up. While others, just like the first tryouts, felt the pain of Peter's wrath and bowed out. 
the guy from the first round that fell, went down, just got up two hours, two hours later, just got off his back. That was a rough session for him. There were, though, some signs of hope in the bunch, and some talent was beginning to show. I started doing it since I was 12 years old, and then I'm, I'm, keep, I'm keep doing it better and better and better. I'm Morteza Shahi, and I came here from Iran, and I have about eight to nine years kickboxing background, so as soon as I came here, I started doing... Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mortez is a lot of fun. Uh, he is a super nice guy. Got the potential to be a good fighter, but he may have a problem where he already thinks he is a great fighter. He wants to be a pro fighter. He's got to be hearing those footsteps behind him, pushing him all the time. Get off the drugs if you can do this, okay? I never do that, you know, What? I never do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, I don't even smoke cigarettes, bro. So, but you're hyper always. So, I'm like, Dad, I was born like that. I need a translator! Translator! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Push it. Looking pretty intense. A little scary. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty intimidated right now. But you're probably going to see me die a little bit. <laughs> Um, I'm not in the best shape, so it's gonna be, uh, gonna be hurt. My name's Ashley Welsh. I work as the receptionist and administrative assistant to the chief economist at my work, and uh, fighting was a topic that I could relate to well with my grandfather. And uh, he was a boxer in his 20s, and I'm in my 20s now, and he passed away in the summer, and um, the gym also closed as well, so that passion that we shared for fighting, I like to kind of carry that through and continue the sport. I remember I was shaking and I was dizzy afterwards. It was just something that I wasn't really used to. Never really pushed myself that hard because I really wanted to make it and I was really driven and really trying to make the cut. So it was it was pretty hard on my body, that's for sure. <laughs> As the second round carried on, people continued to drop out. Peter says, having seen what he's seen now, he can tell already if somebody has, has it in here and has the potential to, to make it through the program. Boyd, on the other hand, thought that because he had previously gone through two vigorous workouts with Peter, that he didn't have to compete in the second round of tryouts. Boyd thinks that uh, he's not doing this workout for some reason. He didn't bring his training clothes. Well, why does he get a pass? So uh, I'm gonna about to break it to him that uh, he's gonna get his ass in the cage. second round of tryouts for the one-year MMA training program roll on. While the program curator, Boyd Sharp, decided to stand by and watch the Cube suffer like he has twice before. Head trainer Peter Martel isn't impressed with Boyd's decision. Uh, I know that you're uh, in your Cube role, but uh, we need you in the cage role, so you, uh, you're not going to get to skip the workout. You know that, right? I didn't even bring any gym clothes. It's okay. Um, I got some shorts for you. We can, we can swap you up. Okay. Yeah. I'm in. That really wasn't an option. <laughs> I thought it was a question. You're in this group. This group? Yeah, you did well. I've been psyching myself up for all of the organization of this day. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about actually getting in there and training. And quite frankly, I haven't done anything physical in like three months. So I got to go get myself a pair of shorts. The guy just said he loaned me an extra pair. Touch your head. Touch your head. Let's go. Uh, if I'd known this was gonna happen, I would not have had three cups of coffee and a greasy freaking breakfast sandwich a half an hour ago. Let's go, 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 go. Show me something. Let's go, let's see your heart here, let's see your heart. Good, how bad you want it? Up and down, up and down, let's go. Keep those hands off your legs. Let's go, that's it. There it is, there it is. That's it, that's Good. the way. 
You're gonna go to your happy place now. You're gonna keep doing this until we say stop, non-stop, like a machine. Up and down, up and down. Come on. I was uh, talking to Boyd, telling him to be a machine. And yeah, the machine's broken. Uh. <laughs> round two's over, guys. Round three coming up. That's the most important round. Boy, get up. You know this is coming. Come on. Boy, man. Sorry about that. That was about five minutes and 45 seconds. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, it's 45 seconds that made you puke. No, he knew this was coming. He should have been ready for this. No, he thought he wasn't doing it. He thought oh. he was going to you know, do the office thing, the cubicle thing all day, you know? Yeah. Doesn't work that way, does it, Boyd? Same boat with everybody else. While Boyd was regaining consciousness on the mat, Peter was busy trying to weed out the dead weight and the people who thought this whole program was a joke. People like Jock and Luke. Uh, I'm Luke Conrad, and I'm a reality show reject. And uh, and I'm Jock Hiltz yeah. as well. And what we do is we go around auditioning, getting rejected from reality shows. This is number 10. When not getting rejected from TV shows, this amateur musician duo spends their off time helping out with local charities. What's kind of cool about um, what we're, well, well, the kind of the concept what we're doing about we're trying to get rejected, but we're using rejection as like a, a stepping stone to something else. We're kind of taking rejection that you're going to face in life. Um, it sounds harsh, but things are not always going to go our way. But it doesn't have to be a bad thing. We can, uh, we turn it around and... Yeah, make something good out of something that could be bad. As we get by on our good looks. So true. Straight fast, like this. Oh my good golly. Let's go, let's go. Quick, 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 quick. 100 straight, let's go. Fast, 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 fast. Come on, fast, fast. Let's go. Come on, let's see what you got. Let's go. Come on. Keep I had no idea what to expect coming in. Um, I saw the camera set up and the people doing the additions and that portion. I'm like excited because that's what we do and, and, and that's what we enjoy doing. That's, we love that. We're like, okay, that part's no problem. I had no idea what to expect during the physical. It was 15 minutes of hell. You in shape? You in shape? Let's go. Let's go. Come on, bubble. Come on, Let's go. Yeah. Ah. Ah. You're still fine. Give me 10 burpees right now. Ten burpees. Let's go. Physically, I wanted to die. Emotionally. I think I was just so drained from being yelled at by Peter to do more. It was just going beyond what I was physically thought I was capable of. Up and down, up and down, get those knees up. Up, 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 up. Come on, come on. Get him up, get him up. Don't quit, don't quit. You're not quitting. No, you're not quitting. Go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Give me some more, let's go. Come on. As Jock continued to scream, his partner, Luke, was struggling to keep moving. Slow motion, slow motion, let's go, let's go. Come on, boom, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hard, 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 come on, hard. And other potential cubes gave it every ounce that they had. Let's go, come on, you got more, let's go, you got more, I know you got more, I know you have more, let's go. Yeah. You know, it's, you go to a point where you're not, you're just running on instinct. You're not even, you're not even thinking. It's just, it's like a survival thing. When I showed up for the first round of tryouts, it was the most physical, intense thing I have ever done in my entire life. When I came to the second tryout, I felt that I would be more prepared for it. Unfortunately, I don't think I was in quite as good a physical condition as I was the first time. He is terrible. He makes Boyd look like a professional Muay Thai fighter. So, <laughs> and that's saying something. Come on, let's go. Come on, hard punches, hard. Pick up the pace, Harry, let's go. Make him work. I don't have to like him, he doesn't have to like me. Hopefully he does, I think my life would be a little easier. 
But all I can do is just come and give him 100% and try to do everything he tells me to do. The trend of the tryouts is young cubes with lots of energy pushing to impress and middle-aged cubes trying to prove they aren't over the hill. Chartered accountant Steve Goodfellow is the perfect example. I was questioning myself in the last five minutes stretch of it as to whether or not I would actually be able to make it. I was beginning to feel pretty fuzzy. The eyes were starting to go. I could feel myself getting close to passing out. I was completely dry. Very, very hard on a 41-year-old body that is, is not used to uh, contact sports for the last 20 years. Being a fighter is very hard, no matter what you do. You know, I, I'm a I'm world champion and, and it's hard, you know what I mean? You put your body through, through this pain and your body's not meant to do this, you know? This is, this is nothing, this is a taste. Being a fighter is a lot of sacrifice. You sacrifice your body, you sacrifice your mind, you sacrifice your food, you sacrifice your social life, you know? So just get ready, boys. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen, because this is what it takes. Peter narrowed the 250-person field down to 30 cubes, who would put their personal lives aside to begin training six days a week for the next year to prepare themselves for the fight of their lives. This is a journey for everybody. This is going to transform everybody's lives. Uh, most of these people here uh, never get up out of bed and thought, hey, guess what, I'm going to be a pro MMA fighter. And now they're thinking that. Some of them are going to fail. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are going to fail. For the lucky few that make it to the end, they get to tell people, I'm a pro mixed martial arts fighter. And that's, uh, that's, a, that's a huge thing. You're not going to meet a pro mixed martial arts fighter in every corner. Uh, this is unique. It's something you can be proud of. The journey for me is to see if I can transform these people who know nothing into fighters. selected 30 cubes to train with him for one year and invited them back to the gym to watch him train his pro fighters from Titans MMA. Several Titans will be featured in a pro fight card in a few days, and the cubes were there to observe how hard the pro fighters train when preparing for a fight, something they will hopefully do themselves in the not-too-distant future. And this is what you're aspiring to, what these guys are going to do in the next few minutes. If you can do that, you'll have no problem in the cage. If you don't think you can do this, now's the time. Have a look at it and ask yourself if this is something that you want to do, if this is something you can do. Don't waste your time, don't waste my time. To be perfectly honest, probably 80% of you won't be here come fight time. Knee, right away, knee, right away, that's it. Again, buy that knee again. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Let's go. Oh, 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 Did I come out? Yeah. Oh, 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 I saw two guys going down, and I saw like legs kind of doing this sort of thing, and they, I heard a scream. Couldn't really see what happened, but then there's a kneecap kind of not where it should have been. And... His leg bends the other way now, yeah. <laughs> so it's not good. <laughs> yeah. Should we look forward to that? He's supposed to fight in a week, so unfortunately he's going to be uh, he's going to be off the card. But that a lot of this is skill, and durability. If you can survive the training, you'll have a career. But that's a that's a lot of it. And that's not bullshit. He tore his knee. That's what happens when you do mixed martial arts. You train like that, you get hurt. You break your fingers, you break your toes, things like that all pop back in place for you. Knees, you gotta go to the hospital. Yeah, what happens now, one of my fighters comes over to me and you know I look at his toe and it's sticking straight up in the air. So I just put my arm around him and I say, don't worry, we'll take care of it. And I step on his foot and put his toe back in place. Um, and they go back to training. Or you know, I'll grab them by the wrist and I'll pop their finger back in place and away they go. And I've got respect for the ladies in this course, and I'm curious to see how they'll take it when they 
have a finger that's pointing backwards um, and I've got to try to pop it back in place and see if they want to come back the next day. You're going to be sore, like Peter said. You got Some people are going to get hurt. You're not going to want to get up and run. You're not going to want to do this. You're going to have to be a good actor. Show no mercy, show no pain. And by the end of the day, guys, you guys will each have punched each other in the face several times. Exactly. I punch Peter in the face <laughs> daily. It makes me feel good. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. <laughs> Peter said flat out, in a few months, half of you will be gone. I'm going to see who has it in the next few weeks by pushing these guys and driving them to the edge and beyond to see who breaks, who lasts. And, uh, you know, some of them I'm going to be able to say, hey, that guy's got it. He's going to be a fighter. And I'm going to look at some of them and go, you're wasting your time. You're wasting my time. <laughs> you know, go do something else. cubicle to the cage. The cubes get their first taste of live cage fighting, and it's a little more intense than some of them expected. Peter uses this fear to try and weed out the weak cubes as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah. Now here we go. Yeah, yeah. Come on. All right, now here we go. Here we go. Yo, like a doormat, like a flathead from the weight of the day.